two stars back, by the way, Bill Stumblefield. Bill. <laughs> Got his chair back. Got my chair back, and and I was sitting back there with Colin, and he says those benches are tough back there, and they are. So tell Hornby he needs to up class, upgrade the uh, yeah uh, the producer's chair. If you get in the air studio, yeah. where the on air people are, the mic people, yeah, we have padded, cushy yeah. chairs. When you go to Colin's studio, those are wooden benches, and when they did the nails, they did them from the bottom, and That's they, they it, stick yeah. up. So <laughs> it's it's difficult over there. Colin's tough. But it keeps him alert the whole time. He well, doesn't, he never relaxes. They never fall yeah. asleep back there. Look at there. him chuckling <laughs> out that, there. That's the purpose of it, too. It. Nails up, they call it. When yeah. you go to the newsroom, they say nails up. And, and you know, I've he's told me this for several months now, but I did not fully appreciate it until Maria kicked me back to the back of the room uh, with the last segment, and I experienced it firsthand. Well, it lets you know, Bill, how good you have it in here. <laughs> because there was a lot of complaining going on with you and Gilstrap the other day about how tough it is inside this room here. And but I we, said, but if you how go, tough. Go, in the, tough go, go where yeah, Colin is, but it's, it's tough in there. We were not talking about the comfort of the chairs, though. We were talking about the the host. <laughs> <laughs> I, I run a stern shop. I demand excellence. Our guest, And you get it. <laughs> our guest in this segment is Danny Staggers himself, attorney at law, and he uh, specializes in elder care law, knows the uh, law in the state like the back of his hand, and he also picked up lunch yesterday too bill he so, did he Danny, did thank you again very generous oh bill yeah. got the tip though he got the tip well, for bring us. your mic great. close pull your mic closer <laughs> i'm to sorry you. bill got did the you tip. go to the usual spot we did okay we yeah. did yeah it was boys only yeah we expected maria I heard. to show up though boys club where were you maria you didn't even invite me uh, don't even get a start written invitation next time don't we'll even start sure. well that changes the rules we'll have to elect new officers that's a whole different lunch club right there that's another gathering. Yeah, uh, Danny, uh, as we get uh, halfway through this year, are there any changes in the law that we need to know about uh, for elder law and elder care? Well, I want to back up, Rob, on something else. And, and Bill and I talked about this a little bit yesterday. Is so many people come in and we always uh, degrade or, or minimize West Virginia. And, and they say, oh, I'm going to go to a Maryland nursing home or a Virginia nursing home. Well, one, we have good facilities. We really do around the area. Uh, but one of the things I tell them, it's easier to get public assistance in West Virginia than in Virginia or Maryland. And the reason that you do that is I'm just going to pick on Maryland right now because a lot of people were sitting right on the border. They want to go to a facility there. And I'm licensed in Maryland. I can do that. But the point being is Maryland wants five years of bank statements. In West Virginia, they want to look at three months of bank statement, which, statements, which is a huge difference. And, and when I say that is because West Virginia can go back five years if they see something suspicious in that three-month period. So what they're looking at is gifting. Okay, but we're talking about for uh, for financial aid, financial That's right. assistance. That's right. Yeah. Well, let yes. me throw out a hypothetical. So let's just say I'm going to pick a stock. I don't know. Let's say you own a lot of Tesla stock. Yes. And then all of a sudden that you don't. sold it low. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you do that, you. Rob? <laughs> <laughs> Rob buys high and sells low. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he was telling us that. The yeah. Way, unique financial experience. And he's good at it. <laughs> yeah, so all of a sudden you don't have a bunch of Tesla stock. That would be something that you would investigate, right? Well, if, if, what they're looking at is something suspicious. So if there's a low Tesla stock and it's Bill Stubblefield, I'm sure they may be looking at that. I would hope. <laughs> <laughs> this man needs investigated, Dan. <laughs> he needs investigated. Well, we can do that on the side. Yeah, now. Yeah. So, Thanks for shining the spotlight there, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> I walk out and I'll be waiting for my handcuffs to be put on. Let me look go. at the, the flip side of that, though, Danny, is if they're only going to ask for three months at, up front, wouldn't it be easier to defraud the taxpayers of West Virginia if they're not as stringent in terms of looking at your financial history in West Virginia? Well, and, and that could be true. But as an elder law attorney, you, I'm not going to sign off on them if they're coming in and, and telling me, oh, I did this back in, in such and such day. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, and we talked about this yesterday, Bill, some people think, oh, I can contribute to a church and that's not going to count. No, they're looking at any gift uh, you know, that, that you've done over this, this period of time. I had a case, it was in Jefferson County. Uh, the daughters knew that mom liked to contribute to the church and they thought mom's going to lose all of her assets. Let's give the church $30,000. That would have disqualified mom from getting public assistance for three or three months. 
and and that's a lot of money when you you know when you're looking at nursing home cost ten to fifteen thousand dollars per month you know so we were able to correct it but you want to yeah it, it probably could but you hope that people wouldn't do that kind of thing and like i said with me we, we're looking back we're, mm-hmm. we're making sure as best we can that somebody's not trying to to defraud what percentage danny would you say of um of folks I, i'm asking you to make a sweeping <laughs> generalization um who either deplete their assets so that they can go on you're talking about medicaid medicaid right to go into a nursing home and how many um folks would you say in general are private pay at a nursing home private pay is and again uh that's a that's a minimal number uh, over a period of time because okay. people cannot afford, you know, that fifteen thousand per month. It really is going to deplete the assets pretty quickly. Now there are people of means like Mr. Stubblefield. Oh no, don't go here. <laughs> here we go. I sold I sold my Tesla stock. <laughs> Back in private pay. But here's here's a point, and and one of the things, and and this is what I was going to bring up later, is make. You know how many people have come in and they'll say, I spent $200,000. I didn't know we could do anything. And wh- that's one of the reasons I like talking about it along because people can do things. Uh, you know, we could, a husband and wife, we can buy what is called a Medicaid qualified annuity. Federal law, we can do this and I can protect that asset. Mom and dad have paid taxes all their life. They worked hard to pass something on to their children and then we'll lose it by giving it to a big corporation. So, you know, these are just little specifics. Let's go back to Maryland. So in Maryland, I can't protect your real estate like I can in West Virginia. West Virginia has um, a statute, it's called a transfer on death deed. And what that means is mom and dad can transfer the house to their children, but it's revocable, therefore you have not transferred anything. And so, um, so there's no five-year look back because you haven't transferred but when they pass when mom and dad pass it goes outside the estate directly to the children creditors in west virginia cannot go after anything going outside the estate we just protected the house a major investment and i don't again i don't want to just be handing it over to a big corporation i don't mind paying fair share of taxes but i also want to do as much as i can to protect you know the ordinary people that that uh, they've worked so hard for. Um, I want to go back to uh, something else too. Is um, this has come up, and I hate to. You want to make sure that you talk to somebody that knows elder law. And I, I don't want to. I never want to diminish any other attorney. We had a case here recently. The um, fellow came in after four years. What happened is he had gone to an attorney. The attorney said, transfer everything out of mom's name. We'll wait through the five years, and then uh, she'll be Medicaid qualified, and we'll have the, all those assets. What happened is in the fourth year, he comes in, and he says, Danny, I don't have any anything left. <laughs> We've got a year to go. I said, oh, I'm so sorry, because if you had come in at the beginning, we could have protected the house. We could have protected the money. You know, people are becoming a pauper you know, to, to spin that down. Uh, you know, in, in, in other cases, for example, somebody comes in with a lot of money. You know what we do sometimes is I'll give like enough money to mom and dad that we can pay through a five year period, take the balance, give it to the kids. That way uh, we'll get through that five year period because we paid for mom and dad to get through, take the other money, which is in excess, give it to the children, and then do a special needs trust or or a protective trust back to the parents. Because what if the kids go through a divorce, it's in their name, or they have a car accident? I don't want to expose that money. So people of, you know, pretty significant means, we're going to take that route rather than going through the Medicaid assistance. But again, it's people need assistance. And Go ahead. So uh, that actually brings me to another question. So in the nonprofit world, um, there is, I don't want to say there's a movement, but to um, to basically prepare your own will. Yes. And we know oh, people okay. yes. and we know people can do that. They think they're saving whatever it is, yes. 200, 600, 800 dollars. And, um, you know, you can go online and 
and just go. Yes. Why would you recommend, other than, here, I'm giving him the softball deal. Um, <laughs> oh, I why need would it. You, After dealing with these two, I need it, Maria. <laughs> why would you recommend people to go to an attorney? to? Pre- and I'm assuming that's what you would I recommend, would. rather would, than doing an online will or doing a... What's it called when you write your own will? Holographic uh, will. Holographic will, yeah. But And, Maria, here's the point, and that's what I was just trying to allude to earlier. So many people out there don't know elder law, and then they try to go to somebody that will tell them things that doesn't get, get it right. So one of the phrases I've heard is legal zoom to legal doom, meaning a lot of these TV you know, advertisements – Oh, we'll do the will. It's only $190 or something. You know, when you go, you want to make sure everything's going to be passed down to your children properly. Not to have something that's um, not be a hiccup because it was not properly prepared. And, and you know, the write, trying to write it by yourself. Do you know how many times people have come into me? Oh, Mr. Staggers, I didn't need your service. I did my own will. I hand wrote it out or I typed it out. And then they'll say, um, you could look at it. And the first paragraph says, I give everything to my sister Sally, let's say. Next paragraph, I give my piano to my other sister, Linda. Now, what do you think has just happened? We have a conflict there, and it's going to create problems. And, and in the estate process, probably the most litigated area, Bill, you can attest to that, it's just nasty things that have come up when you get to people looking – you know, looking at the assets and what they can get, and mom and dad should have left this to me, and I'm going to challenge that. Yeah, I uh, that was one of the most uh, uh, disappointing parts of being a county commissioner. Yes, uh, we we litigated, if you will, yes. uh, a lot of the wills, and uh, uh, there can be a lot of viciousness in the family yes. uh, based upon how the will reads. Yes, yeah. yes, and I, I want to follow up. I want to move from your statement. Uh, Because I want to try to get as much information out as I can. You know, there's federal laws out there, too, because a lot of people think, oh, I'm going on public assistance. I'm getting Medicaid. I will not get the same treatment as somebody that's private pay. Federal law says that you have to. So be careful if somebody in the nursing home says, oh, because you're uh, on public assistance, we're going to put you in this room, you know, contrary to somebody else's room. Federal law says you have a right to the same a treatment that somebody's on private pay. Second thing is, well, visiting hours at the nursing home are like from 8 in the morning till uh, 6 in the evening. Under federal law, if you're family, you can go anytime in to see your family. You know, and, and if anybody that we're speaking to in the radio world today needs that copy of that federal law, I have it at the office. I can share that with you. The, the other thing is, because a lot of times what happens is Medicare will ki- start off First 20 days, Medicare will pay 100% if you come in from a hospital for, you know. for Skilled care. Skilled care. Then it's 21st day to the 100th day, Medicare will pick up 80% and your Medicare supplement will pick up the balance. <clears throat> what happens is they say if you've reached maximum improvement, you know, and you're no longer improving, we take you off Medicare. Federal law says, and I'm not going to get into litigation because I'm trying to stay away from the courts as much as possible. I don't, uh, I did it one time, I don't like it. But federal law says that if you take somebody off the um, physical therapy and their condition starts deteriorating, um, then they have to stay on that Medicare. A lot of people don't know that. So there's so many things out there that we just can't give it all at <laughs> one time. Yeah. Danny, you've used in the past, uh, revocable trust yes and we've had one of the comments on facebook to ask you to explain that in more detail and the options involved sure well the problem with revocable trust as far as medicaid assistance that makes the assets still available you know to to the uh person and therefore it's not going to be uh protected from getting medicaid assistance but you you know mom and dad may want to do a revocable trust so that they can control the assets during their lifetime and protect a child that might be a spendthrift, you know, going out there and spending all the money. I know if I got a bunch of money at 18, 
I'd have been buying a car, I'd have been taking trips. So mom and dad will control it during their lifetime, and then it becomes irrevocable upon their passing so that the children just can't go in and, and grab the assets. And you always want to put in a revocable trust. I call it the HEMS provision. You can obey the principle for the health, education, maintenance, and support of that child. For example, the child, I'll give you a case in point. It was out originally West Virginia. Mom and dad did the revocable trust. They had two daughters, beautiful daughters. But what happened was one child was in a car accident. She's a paraplegic. You want to give more assistance to that child. And so with the revocable trust, you can change that to take care of that child where the other child was fully developed. And actually, I think she went on and made good money in her lifetime. Can a trust be fought in a court, uh, Danny, with success? You mean to, to challenge that trust? Yes. Well, it depends. So many people, and forgive me, Lord, um, so many people are very creative in their pleadings. Well, <laughs> mom and dad, you know, they weren't competent at that time, or there was undue influence. Uh, it, it, it is out there, and I'm sure people challenge it. I'm sure people say that's not what mom wanted. She was not, you know, uh, competent when she wrote that trust. So it happens, Rob. And, and again, just I'm going to come back to Bill. People see the dollar on the table. They want to challenge it. You know, they want to, you know, they want to make a claim. Hey, that's mine. Mom, mom and dad, you know, really mm -hmm. um, didn't want that other child to get it. I, I want to follow up, too, coming back to that West Virginia versus Maryland and, and other states. Again, you know, so many people, mom's in um, Berkeley County. Well, you know, I want to get mom in Berkeley County. Well, the rooms may not be available because they set aside so much Medicaid beds in a nursing home. So I tell people, let's get them into the nursing, facility, nursing home facility, and then we may be able to move them back to Berkeley County if a bed opens. And like in Jefferson County, a lot of good facilities. Berkeley Springs has two great facilities up there. One's in the hospital, you know, one's uh, a private facility outside. Yeah. yeah, I mean, just good facilities. Hampshire County has two good ones up there too. So I may have to get, you know, somebody there first and then move them back. I, I hate to say this, Baker, West Virginia, which is out in the boonies, beautiful place and a great restaurant over there. Now, <laughs> Bill, my secretary says I visit places based upon the restaurant. I agree with her because based on your stories, it usually ties to a restaurant or a haunted hotel. So the next the next lunch date is going to be in Baker, West Baker. Virginia? Oh, it's a great place. It's, okay. called, it's called, what is that called? Lost River Grill. Okay. I mean, I had to visit a client out there, so I make my appointments out there based upon me being able to go to the restaurant. <laughs> now I'm getting hungry. <laughs> but Baker has a good one. And in Tucker County, you know, is a good one. I know, good restaurants up there. But... Um, so you're saying Berkeley County's not up to par with no Oh, no, no, care? Berkeley's good. I'm just saying if you can't get them in here. What I'm trying to say is... Because there are not beds that's available. Right. That's I right. mean, we had a meeting yesterday. We have a specific nursing home team. Yes. At hospice? Yes. At hospice, and, um, and beds are at a premium right yes. now, Danny, yes. aren't they? Yes, they really are. But again, I might go so far out as Tucker County. And the reason I say that is because of um, the spouse can live in that facility with the other spouse, the uh, institutionalized spouse, what we call them. And, and so um, that's a great facility. And, forgive me, blueberry pancakes at Canaan Valley are the best. <laughs> oh, I love blueberry pancakes. <laughs> love them. So, so I wanted to bring up that. And again, I've talked about the, um, you know, the transfer on death deed. <clears throat> And even if a single person is going into the nursing home, we can protect the assets. I can protect the house. I can protect the money. And, and so um, that's why I'm really high on West Virginia, you know, because of what is available out there. And the facilities are great. Hospice is great. You know, so many people tell me, hey, I'm on hospice, you know, and, and it's the end of, end of life. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a great program you know, for so many different people. All right, we have two minutes left. Oh, what wow. have you not gotten to that you really need to make sure you get across? Well, again, I want to tell everybody, make sure if federal rights, I've got that list at the office. I can give those to people. What, what your rights are if your family's in, someone in your family's in a nursing home. And then, again, prepaid bills, 
you know, if somebody's going into a nursing home, just take care of those things. Prepay the funeral expenses. Those are, are so important. Make sure you have a good power of attorney. It's so critical because so many people will just pull one offline that's not good to protecting assets. Very good. So uh, do you work with the local funeral homes, uh, Browns in particular? <laughs> the heavy, heavy. They've been very good because a lot of them, they, they know I do this. Mm-hmm. And so if somebody comes in and they'll ask, you know, like, uh, I don't want to mention names because then I'll get in trouble. But they'll ask and they'll say, hey, my mom's getting sick. Do you know somebody? And they do refer, you know, cases mm-hmm. to me. And, and again, like I said, Rob, I just want to get the message out because so many people just don't know. You know, like I said, uh, one lady in, in Romney, she had lost over $200,000 and if she had just known. In fact, I'm going to go to Greenbrier County this fall. Great hotel down there. Of course. <laughs> That's the haunted one, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah. Hey, uh, Danny, tell people how they can get in touch with you. Sure. Danny Staggers, uh, I'm at 133 East John Street, Martinsburg, West Virginia, 304-267-3915. Email address staggersmartinsburg at gmail.com. And if you're looking for a good cake. Oh, my God, Romney. <laughs> we know that. There's a lady up there in Romney. She was a pastry chef at Nima Colin, for goodness sakes. And she, she came back because she fell in love with her boyfriend, so she's in Romney. I shouldn't say this because now everybody will run up there to get that cake. That's good cake. Danny, thanks, <laughs> thanks for coming in, man. Thanks, Thank Danny. you. Thank you. That's uh, Attorney at Law, Danny Staggers, as we get ready to wrap up the show with the final minute uh, on the way. And thanks for Jeff Haddix on his vacation listening to us from the Outer Banks at Nags Head. Jeff, you're the man. <laughs> <laughs>